welcome to this special workbench video featuring the Kerno Great Western Steam Rail Motor. This will be a technical discussion for those with some electronic knowledge and I'm not recommending you undertake any of the actions I have done. However, I have sought to minimise alteration to the original model design. I had to send back my original model seen in the video here due to the failure of the LED head and tail lights. As you can see here the white light had already failed and the rear red was massively bright and heading for oblivion. Kono sent me a brand new model but I noticed that the head and tail lights were very bright. Not only did this look all wrong for what were in fact very dimly lit paraffin or oil lamps but the LEDs looked to be at serious risk of burning out again. It also spoiled an otherwise fantastic model making it look like something out of close encounters, especially at night. I therefore put a lot of time and effort into finding a method to dim them down while avoiding any material modifications to the model. Let's look at the circuit on the internal PCB. The PCB is a strange white shiny affair which appears to be double sided such that all the tracks can't be traced as the coach lighting units are attached to the underside. However, I have identified that the circuit to the head and tail lamps is as shown now on your screen. In the roof of the model is a small PCB with three sprung pins that make contact with the three landing pads on the PCB marked UB+, FL and RL. The UB+, being the common feed to the bi-coloured LEDs fitted to the lamps. Also on the PCB in the roof are two 6K8 6800 ohm resistors, one per LED unit. The voltage at the pins was measured as 3 volts, with the switching done by directional diodes on the DCC blanking plate. 6K8 at 3 volts is quite large, however I'm convinced it's not enough to both protect the LEDs and deliver a more realistic light output. Let me say now that DCC users can dim these lights via their CVV settings, so this discussion only applies to DC analog users. Initially I thought that R14 at 200 ohms was the resistor to target, however I later realised that this is in fact the feed resistor for the coach lighting and stay alive capacitor. The UB plus pad actually providing power for both the head and tail lights and the coach lighting that is noted by many as barely visible. I was therefore left with finding a way to add extra resistance to the LEDs without interfering with the rest of the circuit. I did not want to try to chance the surface mount resistors R10 and 11 on the roof PCB as this would have been hard, risk damage and would have been a material change. So instead I devised a method of introducing my extra resistance at the landing pad UB+, but with minimal thickness to hopefully allow the spring pin to compensate. The only way I could do so was to use some copper tape as seen here. It's not expensive, it's self adhesive on one side and very importantly can be soldered to at low temperature. I installed one length as shown directly in contact with the UB plus pad. I turned back the tape on itself to ensure the adhesive did not cause connection issues. I then added a strip of clear polythene bag covering the pad and tape. Fix this using some Pritt stick. After this I added another strip of copper tape on top of the insulator and the first tape, making sure it did not obstruct pad FL, and ensuring close to the UB plus pad as possible. I then soldered a 1 8 watt 1k ohm resistor across the far ends of the tape. My plan was that once the body was back on, the pins would hold everything in place and could compress the tape making good contact. I guessed on the 1K as a percentage of the already in place 6K8 surface mount devices. This represents an increase of 14% in resistance. However, it should be noted that LED brightness is not linear based on the current limit resistor value. Because the model is dreadfully vulnerable, I did not want to have to keep assembling and reopening to change values. On test, I'm pleased to report that the LEDs now glow at a far more reasonable level and no longer look like they are being overdriven. In reality, I would have preferred a little dimmer still, however, there are other factors that need to be considered here. 
Because I've reduced the current draw on the UB plus pad, 3 volt supply, there is more current for the coach lighting units, which now glow far more visibly, as well as demonstrating the stay alive function I brought to your attention some time back. My only concern here is that for some reason the stay alive anti-flicker capacitor is only rated at 2.7 volts, but at 100,000 microfarads, shown as 0.1F on the can. An incredibly large storage value, but at 2.7 volts this is very near to the 3 volt supply. However, there is R14 to protect this I guess. Possibly there may be an easier component swap that could achieve the results, but without the circuit diagram, which appears to be unavailable, I'm reluctant to attempt any more tests and changes. It might be nice if Kerno could look to incorporating a variable resistor for control of the head tail lamps, or ask their manufacturers to fit a higher value resistor on the roof of the PCB, 7K8 maybe, and then to balance the coach lighting for the desired effect and protection of the stay alive capacitor. Perhaps in order to preserve the voltage drop, a higher value resistor could be placed across the feed rail, who knows. I hope some of you found this interesting.